crispy. And welcome back to another episode of Figures in Action. And today I bring to you, let me go the other way, a uh, freshly finished Doctor Doom throne and background set, I guess. Uh, all right, let's get into this guy real quick. I'm actually on my way to court as I have to fight a speeding ticket, which I didn't speed. So that should be interesting. But anyway, uh, was contacted by someone who's gotten a dial from me before. And actually had hit me up a while back. Uh, we just didn't connect for whatever reason. And so it took a little bit longer to, to kind of connect. And so finally, uh, he hit me up at the perfect time as I was kind of in between commissions. And I can take on this smaller dial. This measures uh, about ten and a half feet long. I believe it's about eight and a half inches deep, and almost twelve inches tall. And uh, this was made specifically for the newest Doctor Doom uh, action figure from Marvel Legends. You know, anytime I and let me just let me just uh, take this figure out so I can kind of get into uh, into reviewing or kind of going through this uh, this diorama real quick. So, anytime. I get asked to build things that I normally don't build. It's not always the easiest thing in the world. Is I don't have blueprints for a lot of these things. I have a basic idea in my head. I can do a little research. But this is, I believe, the second throne I've been asked to do. I want to say number two. The first one was a Black Panther throne. Uh, so a couple of things that I wanted to do with this guy. And uh, let's go through it real quick. So first and foremost, uh, installation foam board for the base, the back, uh, this little base as well. The chair is also made of uh, installation foam board as well as like that skinny foam board, which is just a project foam board, which is what I'm using to, as a background for this dial. And all it is is this stuff that you can just kind of peel the paper off. If I get at the dollar store, everyone asks me all the time. It's just basic this is what the kids use for projects in, in school and in middle school and high school and so forth. So not an easy uh, thing to acquire. So pretty much most of, most of this is, is just that. It's just kind of the skinny foam board. This back piece is actually a foam sheet. And it's uh, what I wanted to do because Dr. Doom kind of has a skirt in the back that I don't think can be removed. So I needed to kind of be strategic on how I did it. So what I did is came up with a system here where... If you see the back, it's kind of hollowed out. And because this is a foam sheet, it flexes. So you can sit Doom down and put the skirt through uh, if you wanted to sit him way in the back. And then when he gets up from the from the throne, you can just kind of put it back and it just falls right back into place. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, idea. It, it You know, when I first started to, when I first got the, the, the commission, the first thing I do is I take an action figure and I kind of stand him up and measure, you know, from his heel to the back to the back of his knee back of his knee to kind of the end of his butt and from the end of his butt to you know the back of his head and so i do that whole measurement thing so again as i'm doing this i'm like man this is gonna be a pain in the butt so i think that this is a pretty good solution originally i had made it and it was just kind of cut out like that but i didn't like that look i would rather have kind of a complete type of throne and i also did it in a way where there's a little bit of a lip here so that it kind of falls right back into place. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature. And this chair is nothing super special. It's, you know, three different kind of layers here. Um, and uh, it is removable. So this is uh, one piece by itself. And then what I did here is I actually kind of made a mistake and had to go back. So normally what I should have done is just not carve this area out. Like I carved the rest of it. But I didn't. I didn't think. Or I shouldn't say that. I wasn't sure what I was going to do for a rug. And because of that. I went the route of just carving the whole thing out. And then I thought about it. And if I was to put like felt or any type of material, it just wouldn't look right. Like these stairs are too small to kind of curve almost any material around it and make it look, you know, flat. And so you can see the edge of the stairs. So instead what I did is once everything was kind of uh, painted, I took some, uh, and I, I took a couple mini clips. I, I may put them at the end of this video. If I can, I will. If I can't, then whatever. But I put a couple mini clips on my um, Instagram uh, story where I just kind of showed that I, you know, taped this off and used uh, spackling and uh, I spackled this so that I can kind of cover the, the, the gaps there. And then uh, came back with a sponge and used red acrylic paint with some textured 
paint stuff that I, I've showed you guys before. It's kind of that dusting. And it came out really good. I'm really happy with the way the rug came out. And then last minute, I decided to add these. These weren't part of the deal, but I had casted these flames for the rubble pack that I had did. And these two sets of flames, I airbrushed too much. They were too dark, so light wasn't uh, illuminating. So what I did is I just cut the tips off and used them for this. The good thing about it is that this is removable. Um, I did a, I did two different systems. So this is the dowel rod that I use. And then over here, I use more of a kind of a flat so that um, when he gets the set, he knows where what goes into what. So you're not kind of stressing out the holes that are in place there. So in other words, if I stab this into a circular one, it becomes looser and looser. So hopefully this will be a good system for him to, um, to, to instantly know where this goes, where this uh, kind of rectangular one goes here and then this dowel circular one goes here and that's just foam board um with again that casted those casted flames this is uh magnetized so it is so it is removable so it breaks down pretty much into three pieces yeah man so that's pretty much it there's not much of a too much to get into in terms of this uh very happy with the way it came out um just a quick when i did do the rug i mod podged everything first before i taped it down if you just tape it straight to the paint it's going to rip off the paint it already ripped off some of the paint with the mod podge so it's very important that you mod podge it once or twice let that dry then when you put a paint for anything for anything where you're you're using tape once you've painted something uh mod podge it first is it's been um it's helped out, out tremendously what i did is i also dipped this in and then i kind of highlighted this around and left this darker because i just wanted to give it a little bit of more contrast and give it some more color i guess i mean i understand the grays but um i think it ended up looking good at the end and um yeah, man, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I already showed uh, the client, and he's excited about it, so wanted to do this video. And then I did the the black there, so you can see how the fire affects the, the wall there. So I wanted to kind of be as realistic as I could with that. But the client's pretty happy, so once I'm done with this video, I will wrap this up in terms of uh, of packing it, and then I'll ship it out. But it was Mod Podge last night, so this is absolutely 100% ready to go. I'm just going to take a couple pictures after this video, and it'll be done. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to attempt to add those, um, kind of that tutorial to this. It's kind of a mini tutorial, so I'll add it to the end of this video. Uh, so you'll see all the pictures run out, then stay, stick around for a few more seconds. It's maybe two minutes more of uh, kind of going through this real quick. But again, the one thing I didn't mention, mention is mod pausing those sides before you tape them up. All right, y'all, and I am out. Have a great day. Peace. All right, so I am going to attempt to create a rug using paint and patch lightweight spackling and the rug's gonna be there. Let's see how this comes out. Okay, so we have uh, laid down the spackling and I've sanded it off a little bit. It was still a little bit of wet heat, a little wet here, excuse me. So I'm gonna dry that a little more, paint the stairs white. It's kind of sanded, so we're gonna paint the rug next. All right, so it looks like it worked pretty well. It came out the way I thought it was going to come out. So basically what I did is I took um, some acrylic red and then I added some texture powder to it. And I want to say it was probably, I don't know, maybe 25% of the amount of paint that I poured into here is what I use. And what it does, it gives it kind of a sandy type of uh, finish. And I think it's a good look for the rug. I use that sponge and I use a real soft bristle uh, brush to get in between like these little areas where the sponge wouldn't fit. Um, but yeah, I definitely like how it came out. Um, I like that you can still see a little bit of the dip of uh, the ground itself because that's realistic to how a rug would kind of fall into place. 
So yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely happy with what it came out. So the last thing is this little gold border that I have to do on here. And we out.